The moment you have all been waiting for is here. We finally have an actual room to play our game in. That's right, in today's episode, we will be going over some new buildings I designed, the revamped combat system working in-game from the last week's episode, and of course, a hub world with tons of new assets to make map creation easy. Houses are pretty cool. I had a few that I designed, like the blacksmith shop for upgrading tools and crafting new items, the town hall for talking to tons of unique NPCs, and the water mill for fast traveling to other docks we'll rebuild during the game's adventure. I still hate the perspective of the roof on these buildings as it is very straight on and kind of breaks the 2.5D top down view the game is going for, so I will fix this in the future, but for now, let's just check out some of the new buildings I designed. I made some teepees you will find in the village for the slightly less wealthy villagers, and then some flat roof log houses for some more variety. I want this place to feel like a real island with real villagers inhabiting it, so I will be designing each house slightly different from each other while still sticking with a similar style for the town to feel cohesive and consistent. I look forward to designing some hut style buildings as well and adding the futuristic elements to the main shops around the town. For those of you that are new here, this game has a mix between a fantasy native theming and a futuristic magical aesthetic. As you complete the towers and restore the elemental energies, certain aspects of the town will return to a more futuristic energy powered look, but more on that in future devlogs. While these new houses are looking pretty cool, this did take me a while to make. It can be frustrating creating everything piece by piece, so let me briefly talk about the video sponsor, Core. If you're a fan of this channel, then you remember I did a segment with this company in the past. Well, for the new watchers, Core is a game creation platform powered by Unreal Engine, where you can create your own games with their built-in, insanely high-quality 3D models. Did I mention that you can get paid for the games that you create? Yeah, pretty crazy. If you aren't too much into the development side though, I would highly recommend checking out the platform for hopping on with some friends and playing some games that other people have already created. Core offers designers with thousands of free, high quality music, sound, and art assets. If you were looking to get a bit more hands-on, Core allows you to code in a language called Lua. Make games from scratch or redesign other people's already existing projects you are inspired by. Publishing on a platform has never been easier as with Core, all it takes is a click of a button. My favorite part about Core is that they take care of a lot of the hard to integrate stuff like online multiplayer networking. To wrap up the features, Core is now accepting applications for a new game jam they are hosting. This event runs from March 4th to April 5th. Compete against other developers for over $120,000 in prizes. Check out the link in the description to find more info on the event and sign up for Core now. It's completely free and a great addition to the community of game developers and players alike. All right, now let's take this concept design and turn it into a working scene. There wasn't a ton of work that went into this as we had already fully designed and created a battle system from what you guys remember from the old devlogs. But after splitting up all of the artwork into pieces, Shay got to replacing all of the old assets for the new ones and finally a moving background. It's not the exact background style I want to go for, but imagine something like the earthbound background mixed with something you would see in Enter the Breach. We're super excited to start playing around with some mathematics for making really cool procedurally animated backgrounds, while still keeping the effects subtle to avoid distracting from the battle happening in the foreground. The battle scene looks much nicer now, but there is still a lot of things to fix and rework as the game progresses, so expect some elements to continue to change and more moves and monsters to be added during the game's development. Last, but certainly not least, is setting up a main hub world for some of you guys to experience in the beta playtest. As I mentioned in the last devlog, we're going to be doing a Kickstarter campaign starting April 15th, and if you guys back enough money, you will get access to the private beta playtest to give us feedback and play the game before anybody else gets their hands on it. It probably won't be anything more than like 20 bucks, so if you really want to test the game, then make sure to just save a little bit of money and you guys will get access to this. 
Sorry for all the ads guys. Anyway, I started designing some new tile sets as if you guys remember from the previous test room, I had manually created all of the paths and water. However, this was extremely frustrating when it came to level designing as it felt very exact and designing levels in a sprite just wasn't working for me. GameMaker has a built-in room editor, so instead we decided the best approach was to create tile sets for the paths, water, and cliff edges, and here they are now. I played around a bit with trying to find a unique style for my rocky paths, but I am actually feeling really good about these endlessly tiling patterns. So we threw everything into an auto tiler in GameMaker, and just like that, we can start creating maps. I'm not going to show you guys everything in the playtest, and again we are still a few months away from being finished for this, so I will continue to improve certain aspects. I got some feedback from my last livestream chat and people were saying the paths were very dark and we came across some weird glitches walking around the map, so again, if you guys want to see content before it hits the public devlogs, make sure to join in on the live streams that happen every Thursday, and follow me on Twitter because I post some cool stuff on there from time to time. This is by far the coolest part of the video, but look at these nighttime effects. We created a test forest scene that you guys can battle monsters in and explore new zones, but when it turns to nighttime you can see these work in progress fireflies my brother made to add to the liveliness of the game. I think polish is highly underrated, so just please, when you are making a game, remember to account for polish. I want to add in some extra random events like trees rustling in the wind, tall grass to walk in and grass blade particles when walking through, and you know, some birds randomly flying around the screen and stuff like that. These subtle details that many people will forget about or feel is unnecessary can really take your game from feeling basic to alive. Can't wait to fix these things as we go along, but I am just so excited for all of these changes. As always, let's end today's video with some questions from the last Monster Tribe devlogs comment section. Goodpal BW Dev asks, is Missing No going to make an appearance in the game? I don't think so. I think I've already pissed off Game Freak enough with my earlier devlogs. But hey, maybe we can make some kind of our own secret Easter egg for players to try and uncover. Who knows? Not sure what's up with only my game dev friends asking questions, but Ollie asks which one is Pikachu? So I'm going to go with the assumption that by Pikachu he is referring to which monster would be the mascot. Technically we don't have a mascot monster yet, however we do know what starter monster players will be given when you start your adventure. The starting monster will be this cloaked monster here, who will start out very basic and boring, however fans of the game will know that there are monster fusions to unlock, so with this guy, you'll be able to unlock all 6 elements to give this guy diversity for a unique player experience early on. There might be some people not too happy about this idea, but it's kind of like if you started a Pokemon game with an Eevee instead of choosing a starter. Still pretty cool, but if you guys don't like this monster, there will be a ton of new creatures to find as soon as you start the game's adventure. That's going to be all for today's devlog, but before you go, I just wanted to say check the carded video as I recently uploaded a devlog to help out other developers, but the original thumbnail I made sucked and nobody really watched the video, so do me a solid and check that one out after you finish this one. Also, please check the link in the description and go download Core for a new type of game creating experience. Like the video and subscribe to the channel to help me out, and guys, wishlist monster tribe on steam